Alright, everybody. Okay, <laughs> let's try that again. I am in my work clothes this week because this is my first ever video for the employers out there. So if you have any employers that need to hear this message, be sure to share this with them. Uh, so this video, I just want to give um, five tips that uh, employers can consider if they want to make the lives of their employees who have sensory difficulties easier. Uh, so a few of my tips are going to be related to lighting uh, because I personally have a lighting sensitivity and this is one of the things that I need a lot of control over. Uh, so the first one would be uh, if your employees have a lighting sensitivity they need to be able to control the lighting. I personally have difficulties with fluorescent lighting uh, and lighting that has a blue kind of color to it, but different people can have sensitivities to different types of lighting, so allowing your employees to really have control over their lighting is important. Uh, also for me, you know, I really kind of need natural lighting, and that's not the case for everyone, uh, but uh, it's something to consider. Uh, so you're going to have to be able to accommodate, you know, maybe someone wants to sit away from natural lighting in a darker space where they can bring their own lamp or you can provide a lamp for your employee. Uh, or, you know, if you want to replace all of your lighting in your office with the lighting that's more healthy for people, you can do that and everyone will benefit. Uh, so that's something to really consider uh, is letting your employees control their lighting environment. Um, Another one that for me uh, is important but is really, really difficult uh, for employers to do sometimes is to let your employees have uh, control over their temperature. I get cold very, very easily and if it's below 75 degrees, I'm really, really miserable um, and my whole body just becomes tense and locked up and in pain. Uh, from being cold all day uh, and sometimes you can't make an office warmer maybe you can have like a small heater but a lot of buildings don't allow space heaters uh, so that might be like I might be in an office wearing gloves and a jacket and wrapped in a blanket um, it just can be ridiculous but like I'll, you know you maybe you have to allow for policies that say okay maybe encourage everyone okay everyone's allowed to bring a blanket to work if they need to you know just to accommodate for that um, sensory sensitivity to temperature uh, the other thing is some people can get really hot really easily so they need to be able to keep cool uh, and being too hot can be really distressing to some people uh, so I don't have a good answer for this it's like maybe there's a hotter area of the office for the people who run warm and a cooler area of the or you know whatever there's a hot area and a cool area uh, you can you can try to find a balance uh, and you know, lots of people will appreciate this because I think, you know, everyone has a preference if they run warm or cool. Uh, so this could be something that is just a nice thing that you offer for everyone in your workspace. Um, another one to consider is people who have sound sensitivities uh, can really struggle in an open office environment. And that's, you know, the office with, you know, no, no dividers, everyone's just in everyone else's face, and it's really just loud and distracting. Uh, it's cheaper, and it does, you know, people say encourage collaboration to have that open office. Uh, but some people don't work well in that environment. Uh, and so if you do have an open office in your workspace, uh, consider having quiet workspaces as well, where people who really do need quiet can go to work. Uh, if you're going to have an open office, you need to make sure you have lots of phone booths, lots of conference rooms, and places where employees who do not thrive in the loud, busy environment can go to retreat away from that space to get some work done. Because if you let your employees that need peace and quiet to work uh, go focus on their work and get their work done, they're going to get a lot of great work product done. They just need the time and space to do so. Um, oh gosh, I've lost track. How many was that? I should have written these down. Um, I just kind of rehearsed it a few times. <laughs> the, the, the next one I'm going to do, and just because we are getting to the end of time, um, is I want to... Oh, oh, 
oh, oh, the other one was another sound one. Okay, sorry, guys, I'm a mess. Um, so another thing would be uh, sound sensitivities allow um, the use of headphones and earbuds and listening of quietly contained music when in the, in the office. I strongly discourage you from piping music into your office over a loudspeaker system uh, because some people with s sound sensitivities uh, can be sensitive to certain types of music and audio and the continuous draining of it uh, can just be obnoxious and I bet when you talk to all the people in your office, you'll find that they don't all agree on the same type of music anyway, so just allowing everyone to freely listen to their own self-contained uh, music devices while working can be really uh, nice for all of your employees as well. Okay, and then the last one that I have is something that a lot of employees or employers are really hesitant to consider. Um, and you know, I, I want to beg you to consider it because I think it can be so great if you can set your structure up correctly, and that is letting your employees work from home whenever possible. Um, you know, it's just common sense that if your employees are comfortable uh, and feeling good and well rested and happy, then they are going to provide you with a better work product uh, and they're going to enjoy their job more because you know they have more mental energy to focus on just work instead of focusing on oh my gosh I'm so cold oh my god it's so loud and so bright and so annoying in here and all this other distracting sensory stuff that's going on and they can just be at home where they can control their environment completely um, and be comfortable so they can just get their work done. Uh, and you know, you can do this to where they always work from home or, you know, I work from home most of the time, but I do go to the office uh, as needed for meetings, you know, and I, we have lots of video call meetings and telephone meetings and I talk to my colleagues at the office every day. So, you know, I work from home and it's not like I am disconnected uh, from the people that I am working with as I'm working from home. So you can, and you, you can, you can structure it uh, in a way so that you know, you can give your employees more freedom and maybe it's even just a couple days a week working from home or one or, you know, it's, it, it's just, you know, letting your employees kind of recharge their sensory batteries. Um, because one other thing that I think a lot of employers don't understand with sensory stuff is they're like, oh, well, you could stand it this day. Why is it worse today? Um, uh, think of it as like you have like a little health bar in a video game and all the sensory things are chopping off pieces of it throughout the day and you get to this really low health bar at the end of the day because you've been exposed to this hostile sensory environment uh, and so you start the next day and the bar is you know maybe charged up a little bit from sleeping but it's still low and then it chops and chops and chops and then the bar is lower than the day before uh, and so then they come in the third day and they're really you know, they need to recharge their sensory system, but it's an assault uh, and they haven't recharged. Whereas if they were working from home, they could kind of recharge that battery more throughout the day and come back more rested uh, the last, you know, day of the week or, you know, just uh, it's allowing your employees like a break from sensory environments that are, you know, hostile because it's it puts your system kind of on this high alert high defense and very drained mode if you are constantly exposed to uh, an environment that is draining on you uh, you know sometimes your employees will be able to handle it short term but in the long run it can really do some damage uh, so these are my <laughs> business thoughts um, and my my requests of all the employers out there who want to make their workplaces just more accessible uh, for their employees who have sensory issues. Uh, thank you guys so much. I put out new videos every Wednesday. Uh, don't forget to subscribe uh, and there's a bell. You have to turn on the notifications on YouTube or you won't get notified when I put out new content. Uh, anyway guys, thank you so much. I will talk to you next week. Bye!